What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Let's Play SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom. In the last part, we finished Jellyfish Caves. In this part, we're going to go to Jump Mountain Jellyfish. Squidward tells me you're looking for the King Jellyfish. Yes. I am. Good thing, too. That monster has been stinging all my good customers in their poop decks. I oh, hear shit. that you can find him <laughs> on top of Old Sport Mountain here. Go hook that beast, sailor. Oh, boy, Mr. Krabs. I'll see what I can do. You see that positive energy, Patrick? I just want you to keep that for a second. Are you feeling lucky, punk? A squirrel, a star, and a sponge. Hmm. Nah. I don't know any squirrels. Now I know what you're thinking. Did I shoot three shots or two? Well, oh, by the way, this one is another one that you can throw. Tartar sauce is actually kind of, I, well, actually, you know what? I'm gonna stick to this, what I said last episode, that all enemies there are difficult to fight. Actually, I wanna see if you can kill jellyfish. You can kill jellyfish oh, when you're Mrs. Hello, Patrick. I've got a job for you to do. Oh boy. Sweet. I found a golden spatula. Fucking sexual paint favors. Mr. Puff, not around. He needs Patrick to do it. figure out hey. how to get it back. You're welcome to it. Show sure enough, Mrs. Puff. <sighs> All right, I just need to Mrs. Puff. Come on, Patrick, you do it. Come on, you do it. Prunes! Prunes! See, basically what you have to do is pick these guys up and throw it into the, um, into the water. Kind of a, you know, kind of a cool thing to do, but it's one that I always kind of, like, it always, that one and, like, the pick Patrick throwing up, throwing up, throwing mechanic is something, like, with these hammer robots, is something I didn't figure out until, like, like, when I first played through this game, I was on 789. And throughout my life, I, did, I have played this game, as I said, many, many times. This is something I didn't find out until very later. That's what, or very, very much later in the game. And um, once you do get all of those, it really reveals not only a gold spatula but spot, but a nice little shortcut in between, uh, in between islands. You can just jump through there or go back to where Mr. Crab was with, you know, relative ease. Nice little shortcut, so, you know, that's how you do it. For some reason, picking that up was the hardest thing, but... I really like how they... Like, all... Just this attention to detail in this game is awesome. Like, you have the flowing water, which is pretty good for 2003. I'm just gonna let these all get exploded. Now, I'm actually gonna switch out to Spongebob right here. Okay, this is a shishtiki. You can sneak up on it. Um... Oh, that's another mechanic. Well I to done, Patrick. You're a real star. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to those sexual favors. Can I get a cookie? Yeah, you're cookie. No. Oh, come on. I want to be in an undesirable position. Oh, well. Patrick. You can go get some on the bus. Anyway, now, those tiki's right over there, those are called shh tiki's, and um, those ones you have to sneak up on. Um, there's a move we can get that um, can easily dispatch these, but right now, if you want to do it, you have to lightly push up on the uh, control stick and just get really close, really close, really close, really close. Really close. Attack! Oh, damn, I missed. Well, <laughs> oh no. Anyway, kind of difficult to get. Not really worth your time to do so unless you have that power up, like I was saying. But um, yeah, we're just going to continue as SpongeBob and. Uh, not getting into any undesirable positions. Don't want to get a, like, a, you know, friend fight between Spongebob and Patrick. Like that. Like that. Like that. Now, up here is another one. This is kind of strange. Uh, the power, uh, you need a later power up in the game to get this sock and you have to kill all those. It's kind of strange that Jellyfish Fields and, um, the second one, Downtown Bikini Bottom, are the only ones that require you to come back and get it with later power-ups to get it. Well, actually, Goo Lagoon has some games in it that you can come play, but, like, 
I honestly don't see the purpose of that. Like, when you think about it, why not just spread them evenly throughout the game? If you want people to come back, do that for all your areas. But only the first two is kind of strange. And something else I want to point out. Jellyfish Fields, like this is the first level of the game. By far, the most socks. And then you go downtown, Bikini Bottom, Cool Lagoon. And the next ones, they get, like, towards the end, they have three, two, and, like, they're much less spread out later in the game. So, I wish they kind of did a better job with, like, distributing the sock well. Um, just so you know, we do have 13 socks. I did get that one from last episode. But, um, we won't, I won't turn in all the socks. I won't turn in socks until we have all 80 of them, just so, um... Just so I know if I missed one, so that's pretty important for just the uh, counting save. So I'm the sponginator. The sponginator. But um, yeah. And see, again, like what I was saying about with Mr. Krabs, that occasionally these do come up, and they're about two, three thousand each. And like, if I had spent three thousand on it now, I would have to go run around and like you know get shiny objects, and just not something I'm gonna do. I want to make sure these videos are, you know, get stuff done in a relatively speedy manner, so. And I hope I have provided that excellent customer service to you today. Please fill out our online survey, and uh, thank you for flying with us. Because apparently I'm a pilot. Uh, if you're Patrick, you can hit these tiki's for extra coins. It's not really worth your time, so I'm just gonna carry on with Spongebob. Like, sometimes... I don't understand why they need to have a goo puddle there. Like, oh my god. I think this is definitely a case of the Let's Play Curse, because I am usually not bad at combat in this game at all. Anyway, now we have to get here, and one, two, one, two, and we get a sock. I have in my notes bullshit jump in SpongeBob, and I think I should have put that for the slide in the last episode, because. After I went back to go and do that, it took me like, I, I'm not even kidding, like 10 tries to do. I'm like, miss, 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 miss. I don't know if I could time my jumps or maybe it's just because I'm pretty early, but like, Jesus Christ, I was just not, it was not happening. Now, if you go down on this path, you can not only get those, sh oh, shiny object, but a sock. This one's kind of missable, but you can see it on the road. Definitely not as bad as the rock one or the fountain one. The other ones, because you definitely do have to be like looking around your surroundings. I still, th I and I'll say this first. I think the sock one and a couple like is for as early on in the game as it is. They're really cool with that one, like in the um in the right behind you in the cave. That one's pretty cool. But uh, the other ones aren't too bad though. So. Now, I'm just gonna pull myself up, because you know, why not? I have the high ground, don't try it. And get some underwear. Underwear? <laughs> That's a funny joke. Anyway, now we're gonna go. Now, this is kinda like the Super Mario Bros. esque elements. SpongeBob is the only one who can do this, but can bounce right off against the walls, and um. This is a pretty cool mechanic, and. I kind of wish they did more with it, and you'll see what I mean much later in this game, but there's really only one area where it's a main platforming element, and I wish, like, it's kind of, you see it every now and then, and it's usually a means of making sure Spongebob is the only character to go through, kind of like with Patrick's um, throw fruits, but I wish they had done more with that. Like, this is a... An example of a game that has such great gameplay Bubble and design, Gosh, but some of the help out today. Okay, step the quietly there. there. That, that king, king jellyfish, jellyfish is just up at the top of this path. Good luck. You'll, You'll need, need it. it. Thanks. Like the gameplay and the salt, this stuff is so solid. But sometimes I think some of the golden spatulas really don't hit the mark. Like, for example. <laughs> I'm just gonna let him buzz. I'm so. You know what? That's a running theme in all Let's Plays. When I'm doing the group projects, I try to say something, I get interrupted. Oh, or sometimes I do interrupt. Or when I'm doing my solo Let's Play, get interrupted. So I think that is my thing. That 
whatever I'm doing, I either interrupt myself, the game interrupts me, or somebody else interrupts me. I'm just never, like, that's kind of the thing. And we just totally walked in on the dude. So, anyway, this is the first boss of the game. And, uh, this is technically a kind of a mini boss boss. Like, we won't get into the main bosses until much later. There's this, when you think about SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom, um, there's essentially three main areas of Bikini Bottoms, and each of those areas has one main boss and one side boss. This is the side boss, so. I'm just gotta take that side boss out. Now, the only hard part about this boss is the jellyfish that it spawns. You don't have to kill these jellyfish, mind you, but, um, yeah, it definitely does help. Just avoiding it and just jumping over it. Like, this boss battle is not hard. I don't even know. This is, like, you wouldn't even call this boss fight in most games. What? He's alive? Bullshit. Oh, and he's opening the bath curtain, giving us his jelly, which he's milked himself, which is kind of strange, but whatever, to each his own. Some people are into that. Tips off his hat, and we just forced that majestic creature to leave his home. For kind of a jerk. So, you know, maybe the environmentalists, maybe they're right. Maybe we need to start, you know, respecting the jellyfish and natural habitat. Make sure the king jellyfish can, you know, king it up. Now, in this slide, there is a sock, and this one's kind of a douchey spot, so I might have to come back multiple times. There's also a, um, a jump to get a golden spatula at the end of the slide. Um, I'm, based on how well my, uh, oh, jump, based on how well my jump was at the last slide, I'm not sure how well it's gonna go, but I'm gonna give it my all. So we might have to go to her once or twice, but you know what? I'm gonna or more than one, but I'm gonna try to get it. Oh, and first shot. So I guess I kind of redeemed myself. So yay, there's personal growth. Now let's talk to Larry. See, See no the problem. problem. You, you can, can do, do anything, anything you, you set, set your mind, mind and your muscle, muscle to. to. Shut up, Jock. <laughs> He's kind of like Biff. Well, no, no, Biff. I love, I love Back to the Future. Anyway, now we're gonna take this bouncy thing and uh, save Squidward, so we can rub it all over. If you need to look that, you can see the pineapple, Squidward's Tiki, and the rock. So it's right by. I really like how they do that with that in the show. Anyway, let's go talk to him. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, that feels, that feels so, so much, much better. better. Anything for my best friend Squidward. Can, can I, I rub, rub some on? on? Uh, what if I just gave you this? And, yeah, that was awkward. Here, have this. Go away. So with that, we relieve some odd textual, sexual tension. Clear jellyfish fields. We do have two socks that we will be coming back for at a much later point. Probably going to wait until we have both of those power-ups just to finish it. But, um, yeah. The next part, we'll start the next world, which is uh, nope, Downtown Bikini Bottom. Thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you guys in the next episode. See you guys then.